今天我们有幸为您播出其中一场精辟的开示，主题为“师徒之间”节目，《楞严经：色音魔镜与受音魔镜》九集之四，二零一八年十二月二十六日，以英文开示于台湾。台湾又称福尔摩沙。Further, as the person uses his mind to investigate to the utmost point. He may see a good and wise advisor whose body undergoes changes. Within a brief、uh, interval, various transformations will occur, which cannot be explained. This stage is called having an improper mind, which is possessed by a legos, a magos, or a celestial demon. My God. This is the final of the ten already, and still be vulnerable to ghosts and without reason speaking dharma that fathoms wondrous truth as well. Yeah, even because these ghosts they speak through you. <laughs> It does not indicate sagehood. If he does not think he has become a sage, then the demonic formation will subside. It's just trick, illusion. Vision. But if he considers himself a sage, then he will be vulnerable to the demands and influence. Man, why do I have to talk? You know everything. <laughs> okay. Whew. Why do the demons or the ghosts can transform into many different、uh, formats or different? Scenery or different、uh, person. This、uh, cultivator at this stage will see one of the great wise advisor transform himself for different thing, different reason, and no reason at all, and not be able to explain why either. He also could not understand. He just saw that it is because these legos or magos or demons from celestial dream realm influence him to see. Thus, okay, it's not real. So it is still okay.、Mm. It just does not、uh, indicate that、uh, the cultivator has become a sage yet, etc. But he can even speak dharma. He can even preach to people at that stage with wondrous truth, even not just talk talk nonsense or shallowly, but wondrous truth he preach in this state. You will wonder. Probably you ask, if this person is not a, a sage and、uh, possessed by these so-called ghosts and celestial demons, how can he then speak wondrous truth? Can you answer me,、um, Master? Is it because he, the the celestial demons are from second level and they can have eloquence and they're able to speak high truths even though they're demons? Good, very good, very good. Excellent. Good. That's what it is. The ghosts and the celestial beings—they don't have a body. Okay, they can read anything. They can read the Buddha Sutra without opening it. They hear the Buddha's preaching, even though they don't practice or they don't uh, uh, even uh, do anything to become Buddha, or they're not inspired to become Buddha. But they can repeat even. Yeah. So when they possess this person, they speak through him, just repeat like a parrot. Yeah. And of course, not everybody knows all the truth that the Buddha preach, but he may speak just some only, and then they say, "Wow, never heard such thing before. Wow, this person must be a Buddha himself. How can all the people in the world know all about the truth that the Buddha preach or Jesus preach?" You see, even the Bible.、Uh, not every Christian remember everything in the Bible. Not even they read it. 
not even they read all of it. You know, they might read just maybe Psalm or Exodus or, you know, Resurrection, uh, you know, the beginning, but, uh, you know, they, they don't read all, okay? And so if somebody suddenly speaks just like Jesus or like Buddha, then the lay people, normal people think, oh, this guy, he has already attained Buddhahood. How else could he speak such a wonderful uh, words like that? So wise, you know, calmly and wonderfully to hear. Oh, then. So, but the cultivator himself should never, ever think that he already reached the ultimate sagehood. Then he'll be all right. As long as you know, as long as you don't let your ego cheat you, then you're okay. You're okay. You can continue further. Practicing is no end, okay? So it's not the ultimate. All right. So the Buddha say, yeah, because the ghosts, they can know all this. Doesn't matter if they understand or not understand. Doesn't matter if they profit from the Buddha teaching or not. Some do know the Dharma, but it doesn't mean they want to practice. Yes, they might practice some part of the Buddha teaching so that they can become a celestial body, celestial uh, a diva, a, a diva, or can become a king of the heaven, one of the heaven. Remember, some they like it like that. They don't want to become Buddha. Yeah, they not digest the whole thing, just one part. Remember, I tell you a story last Sunday about the. Um, the previous incarnation of the Buddha that he practiced 84,000 years to become a king of heaven, yeah? He already enjoyed 84,000 years on earth as a king, powerful king of one kingdom. And he, he enjoyed all the things that one can enjoy in the world already, he said. And then when he see one hair of his gray, he sweat and tremble. Wow, and he still have 84,000 more years to live. Imagine, how about us, huh? <laughs> ah, fever, no? <laughs> High fever, <laughs> chill. But we don't know. The human don't know that. Only the sage knows that. Even the sage incarnate into a human body still have this booty seat inside, and lightning seat inside never die, okay? That's why I told you, if you, and stay in this stage, and if you die, you still can come back and continue. But if you too proud and believe you are sage already, you cut off, then you're done. The, the, all the ghosts and the demon will power upon you, take off all your merit, and you'll be done with. So the Buddha, although he has been reincarnated as animals, insects, and humans, even kings of heaven, he has never forgot. <laughs> 84 more thousand years to live. Just see one gray hair and he's shaken. He Tremble with fear and, and anxiety, sweating profusely because he worried that time is too short for him to practice. Too short, 84,000 years. <laughs> and what did he want to become to practice another 84,000 years? He wanted to be king of heaven. He said to his uh, relatives and family, all the enjoyment of the world, I already uh, uh, participated, yeah? already enjoyed. Now I want to enjoy the heavenly uh, uh, happiness, okay? That's why he has to go now. He's too old now, <laughs> one hair, <laughs> one gray hair. Too old now, he must go practice. Time doesn't wait. He practiced 84,000 years and he became king of heaven. If you want to become king of heaven, you know what to do now, right? And wait until you want your hair gray, and then 84,000 years you must practice. <laughs> Whether in this life or continue until 84,000 years past. <laughs> now, what did he become after he became king of heaven? He returned to earth again when his marriage ran out. 84,000 year practice to become king of heaven, and still the marriage ran out one day. Some of the heaven king, they have uh, been adorned with the flower naturally. And when one or some of the flower on their head become withered, then they know, oh, it's time to go. Then they will become humans again or animals accordingly. 
And that king has came back to become a king on earth again. And then he probably practiced another 84,000 years, become king of heaven and come back, etc., etc. Now you know, okay? Now you know what to do if you want to become heaven king and then uh, heavenly king and then heavenly, yeah, etc. <laughs> up, down, up, down, yeah? <laughs> Not because the Buddha has forgotten that he's supposed to be a Buddha instead of being a king of heaven, yeah? But he, he wants to make affinity with heavenly beings as well. Hmm? 84,000 years he has made affinity with some of the humans and has been born and lived during his lifetime as king. And then another many kaupa or a thousand or million years in heaven, yeah? Affinity with other heaven beings, okay? That's why. Not because he fall down and uh, desiring heavens or mundane uh, pleasure. No, no, no. It's just made that way, okay? It's arranged that way, not because he want to. Yeah. Even knowing or not knowing, I mean, from the mind, the Buddha has to do all this. Maybe the Buddha did not know, I mean, because of mind, you know? But his souls know, his high self know that that's his purpose. He do this, he do that, and all kind of things, just until finally he became Buddha, and then he can uh, rescue all these people. Huh? All right. Good. Buddha, continue his teaching. My God, the Buddha really teach a lot. This is only one sutra. We have a lot, a lot of Buddha sutras like this, or bigger. I remember the Lotus Sutra is thicker. Yeah, some are thinner, but he has many. He lives long. <laughs> he did live very long, up to eighty something when he went to Nirvana. And that's all Ananda's fault. Disciple, when don't practice well, is easily fooled by Maya. The Buddha said to Ananda, I can live forever. Yeah, I don't have to die. Oh, Ananda has to say just that. Then please leave, Master. Please continue. Say nothing. He hear nothing. He think nothing. He don't answer. And the Buddha says second time, Ananda, I have practiced such and such method. I can live forever. I don't have to die. And he also don't say nothing. Normally he would say, yes, uh, your war on or one, or yes, your thirst come one, yeah, what was that? Or, or what does that mean? Or could you stay then in that case? No, this time he said nothing. Buddha say one more time, third time. Ananda. You know, the Tathagata, I mean the Buddha himself, he, he addressed himself as a Buddha to make Ananda realize he's not a normal man. Still, he don't capish. The Tathagata, I mean the Buddha, can stay forever because I have practiced so and so, I don't have to die. Third time. Ananda hear nothing, don't understand nothing, don't say nothing. So after the third time, the Buddha cannot say anything anymore. So the Maya came, and then Onanda may be still sleeping when the, uh, when the Maya came to Buddha. Maya came and invited Buddha to Nirvana. Because after three times, he asked, nobody invite him to stay here. Then Maya has the right to invite him to go. Of course, Maya very happy, then Buddha is gone. Nobody, <laughs> you know, teach anybody uh, correctly anymore, and I mean physically, personally like this anymore, then the Maya can control the minds of the people again. When the Buddha in the world is different, that's what Jesus said, when I am in the world, as long as I am in the world, I am the light of the world. Yeah, when the light is there, darkness is gone. When the light is gone, then darkness comes. That is the reason the Buddha keeps saying that Tathagata, the Buddha, thus come one, don't have to die, Ananda. Hear nothing, see nothing, understand nothing, sleeping or something. After that, Ananda come talk to Buddha or something, maybe say, what did you say before, Master? <laughs> and the Buddha say, I told you I could live forever, I don't have to die. But you didn't say anything. 
So now Maya has come and invited me to go to Nirvana. And Ananda felt so devastated, yeah? He was so muddle-headed, blur, blind, deaf, dumb, but it's because of the Maya influence. The, the Maya cannot influence the Buddha, so they always influence the next person to, to Buddha and disturb him. Not just one day, many times. Yeah. Just like he cannot seduce the Buddha, he seduce Ananda <laughs> using the daughter of Mantachi or other disciple, etc., etc. Now, okay, should we continue? Yes, Master. You don't feel sleepy? No. no. Oh, tough guys. No, I really meant it. I meant it. Because I was thinking of you when I'm in my house. I was thinking I always came out late, keep you awake and like hinder your holy meditation. <laughs> you already put a lot of effort all day already. Yeah. Sitting all day already. <laughs> Sleeping on sitting on a neighbor's shoulder, whatever. And then at night <laughs> The unkind master, sit there, talk no end. <laughs> How can the back bear it? One of your sisters say, my back is killing me. <laughs> master. <laughs> Remember? <laughs> yeah, and one of the brothers must go somewhere <laughs> secret. When I stop talking here, I go home. I still take you with me. Understand that? <laughs> you won't leave me alone yet. Not so quickly. So I, I remember all these uh, wonderful memories. <laughs> I was thinking, today I should ask you when I stop, okay? Because you sit all day already, you know? Yeah. And you may feel pain or something, especially weather, not so warm. Are you all right, honestly? Yes. Mm. Mm. Master, please stay with us as long as you're happy to stay with us. Mm, we okay. really, really, really enjoy you. Okay. And whatever you do, whether you go past your calendar or whether you do the mm. sutras, we're very grateful to be with you. Okay, wonderful. But I'm always with you. <laughs> I'm always with you. I'm only next door, nearby, anyway. And you never leave me alone in your mind anyway. Where would I go? <laughs> How would I leave you? Huh? How? <laughs> Where? Where to? <laughs> Even I go sleep, I eat something, oh, I think of you. <laughs> oh, maybe the sister have back pain, okay or not? Yeah. <laughs> All right. Wonderful. Continue, okay? Ananda. Mm. The Buddha said to Ananda again. Ananda, these ten states may occur in jhana. In the Zen and the meditation, Dhyana is the word for meditation, huh? and then they translate into Japan becomes Zen. In China is Chan. Mm. This is all from Dhyana, okay? Dhyana, huh? and in Vietnam, Dhyana. It's the same, <laughs> one word, meditation. So, uh, these ten states may occur in Dhyana as one's mental effort interacts with the form skanda. Yes. Our mental effort, yeah, either hindered by skanda or mixed with the kanda, mean our sense, skanda, you know, sense, like smell, touch, all that, okay? From the touch, from the hearing, from the thinking, emotion, touch, drink, taste, yeah? Skanda is a Sanskrit word for all this sensation that we feel through our mind or the body. Okay. So when we put our mind to one pointedness in meditation, then the skandhas, you know, our elements, our feeling also come searching because it's not normal for them to suddenly have the mind sit and doing nothing just concentrate on something that they don't understand. <laughs> so they all come out also, what, 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 what? So, <laughs> therefore we sit there, but we don't always be able to concentrate. But we think of something uh, like uh, something just happened, 
few minutes ago or yesterday or the day before or just just now mm? and then all that thought in come into form yeah all our emotion and all that come into form and when we see some vision and all that at the beginning remember I told you that's the skanda forms mm, a vision yeah so the Buddha say all these are ten vision ten stage of vision coming when we concentrate and our skandhas also coming out and mixing with 